Hey, what's up? My name's Lucas. Welcome to my studio. In this video, I wanted to take some time to show you how to set up an efficient and creative Pro Tools template for songwriting and production. As much as I like starting with a blank canvas, a template can be a really powerful tool to help you streamline your production and also to make sure that all your bounces are sounding as professional as possible with minimum work required. If you want to get a big head start, check out my website for my Pro Tools template packs. I'll leave the link in the description. I also have template packs for Ableton Live and Studio One if you use other DAWs and it goes a long way to help support this channel so I can make more content just like this. Before we start working the template, let's just get on the same page with two quick things. So first of all, I want to make sure your playback engine hardware buffer size is set to 128 samples. This is what I recommend recording vocals and guitar and stuff at because the latency is low enough so that it doesn't usually bother the artist. And then the second thing I want to do is I just want to make sure your window layout is configured kind of similar to how I have it just for now. If you want to work in a different way, that's totally cool. I just want you to be able to see how I have everything laid out. So first of all, you want to make sure that this side panel with the tracks and groups is opened up by clicking right here on the bottom left. The next thing I would like you to do is just make sure you have inserts A through E and F through J enabled. Sometimes I don't want both of these because it takes up a lot of real estate, but for this particular template, I think it's helpful to see both of them. So that's good. You don't really need comments right now. And uh, sends, I would definitely keep open. And then if you press command equal sign, you switch to the mixer. And in order to change the mixer view, you have to go up here to view mix window views and just adjust these right here. So I have inserts A through E, F through J, sends, EQ curve, and definitely want delay compensation enabled here. So. I'll talk about this in a little bit more detail in a second, but I just want to make sure that you're sort of seeing the same thing as I am just to kind of get started. And then you can go from there. Obviously, everyone has a different preference for how they want this to be visually. That's just a starting point for this particular template. The first thing that I'll typically make sure that's sorted out with my templates are the click track. You can steal my settings for this. I like to set it to comp block because the stock Avid click is very piercing and will uh, oftentimes bleed through headphones, but it, that click actually is really good for recording loud rock stuff if you're recording drums or heavy guitars or something where it's like loud and in the room. So you can always switch that back to factory default if you want, but check out this comp block one. I think it's a very pleasant click to have. If you look at my template here, we have lead vocals, lead vocal effects, background vocals, background vocal effects, guitar, bass, drums, keys, effects, and then after that, I have my sub mixes. So everything is piped down into the instrumental. All the instruments will be piped down into the instrumental. All vocals get piped down into the acapella. And then these two, instrumental plus acapella, go into mix bus. And then mix bus goes out to the master. I like to have the routing really sorted out in my templates because that's actually something that can be quite annoying to figure out while you're in the heat of the moment writing a song. So having your groups bust down correctly for whatever type of music or whatever your specific needs are is really important to get right in your template. It may take some time to refine a little bit, but this is just how I prefer to do it. And I'm using the folders feature in Pro Tools, which is a relatively new addition that they have. But if you prefer to just use normal aux tracks with no folders, uh, that is totally fine as well. So these folders are called routing folders. So basically it's a folder that can collapse and all these tracks that are within the folder can route to it. So I think that's really handy. Let's talk about vocal specifically. So I like to have my vocals separated, either lead vocals or background vocals. And I find this helps me just keep things really organized and it just makes it a little bit easier to mix, uh, you know, later on. And for your particular needs, you might actually need more than that. Uh, if you have multiple singers, you might need a couple different groups for different singers. You also might want to have a separate group for ad libs if you're doing hip hop. So let's look at my lead vocals. First of all, I left a track here open for auto key. So if you're using auto tune, as you'll notice immediately, there's an empty slot at the beginning where you can load up auto tune here. So you can hold shift, select all these tracks, hold shift option, click here and then grab auto tune, right? And then it'll load it up on all the tracks. Now, the neat thing is that with auto key, so if you haven't used it, auto tune comes with this nifty plugin called auto key. So you can go to Antares, load up auto key right here. What you can do is you can actually set whatever key you want and it'll send it to all your instances of auto tune. So I always, always have 
a, a random empty track in the vocal group with auto key because when I open a session, um, I'll figure out what key it is and then I want to set all the auto tunes to that specific key immediately in one click. I do not set auto tunes one at a time or drag them around. That's a complete waste of time. So if you're using auto tune, make sure you use auto key as well. I left this blank in this template because this template uses all stock plugins. I want it to open on everyone's computer without any issues. So that's blank here. Now let's look at the vocals. We have them organized by section. So typically when I'm working with a singer, they'll take one pass to figure out what they're doing. So I'll use the lead vocals demo for that. And then everything else is, is by section. So we have verse one, pre, hook, post, verse two, bridge. Obviously you may want to do it a slightly different way, but that I found is the cleanest for me, especially for comping. So if I'm recording verse one, all my takes of verse one are right there on that track. It's really, really organized that way. So on my vocal tracks, what I have is one channel strip. So this is a nice plugin included with Pro Tools that will allow you to compress and do some EQing. Uh, from the get-go, so obviously this needs to be customized to your exact singer and the sound of your room. And then the second thing that I have is a de -er after that. And um, typically you may want to replace these with uh, third-party plugins that you prefer using. So a lot of people will use UAD compressors and EQs. Uh, you may be using FabFilter. You may be using um, Waves plugins. So you can just replace these to taste uh, depending on what you want to do. And then I'll just walk you through the sends right here. I think this works really well for me. So check it out. So we have reverb, slap, delay one, delay two and chorus. Every single one of these lead vocal tracks are routed through all five of those effects. And if you don't need one, you can just bypass it or make it inactive. And then what happens is these are sent to these tracks over here. So this is where you have your verb, slap, delay one, delay two, and chorus. And then those get pipelined into this bus right here. So if you ever needed to mute all the effects, or if you want to print them as a separate stem, so you can have dry vocals and wet vocals, or dry vocals and then vocal effects completely separately, I love having this in a separate bus for that particular reason. Now, of course, you may want to replace these with some third-party plugins. Plugins. So for reverb, it's really popular to use Valhalla. Um, you could also check out some dedicated plugins for like plate reverb or spring reverb or whatever your vibe is. Another neat thing that I set up in advance in this particular template is actually side chains. So the way that I have my side chain set up for this vocal is basically that all my leads are being sent to this bus and then it's called lead vocal sidechain, and then it's coming in on this key input. So when there is lead vocals happening, it ducks the effects a little bit so that it's not getting too washed out in effects. This is a nifty mix trick, and I love having this routing already preset in my templates because it just speeds things up. So I have this sidechain compressor on the reverb, delay one and delay two. More or less same type of setup with the background vocals. So we have this divided up by sections. We have our sidechain, we have background vocal effects that are a little bit wetter, and I just have reverb, delay, and chorus. And this particular delay has quite a lot more happening on it. So we have an EQ going in to just get rid of lows and highs. We have a delay, which is a stock Avid delay. You might want to replace this with Valhalla or with Echo Boy. We have an ensemble plugin. This is actually a great plugin, adding some chorus to the delayed vocal, which is a really nice effect that's commonly used, and then some reverb to wet it up after that. And then it's being sidechain compressed like we discussed earlier, so that's really nice. On my guitar bus, I just have a bunch of tracks and I also have some effect sends that I may or may not need for reverb, delay, and chorus. I made sure to designate that these reverbs and delays are for the guitars, that way I don't confuse them with the vocal effects or any other instrument effects. These just all happen to be bypassed because sometimes I use pedals, so I don't necessarily need them. I also have a preset side chain. This is actually being fed by the kick drum, which we'll get to in, in a little bit. But side chain, I turn the ratio all the way down to nothing because I don't necessarily want this on immediately. I will dial this into taste, but it's already routed and it's ready to go. Pretty much the same deal for bass. So I record a lot of bass guitar. I just have two tracks here. I have a track for synth bass with no plugins on it. If you want to preload it with Serum or whatever third party synths you want to use, you can go ahead and do that and bake it in. I just have a chorus. Uh, set up here so that that's just a send because I like having chorus on my bass, uh, but that's pretty optional. I'm just using the regular air chorus right here. 
There's a ton of great third-party plugins for that too. I really like Reason Rack if you're looking for a great chorus. I think that's a good one. Next, let's look at the drum bus. So this is actually a little bit more interesting. So typically if I'm producing or songwriting, I'm gonna be using some type of third-party drum machine plugin, kind of like Battery or Atlas or XO, Triaz or any of those drum machines. So I laid this out perfectly so that you can start recording really quickly with multi-output drums, because that's key. So let's just say we want to use Atlas to do our drums. This is a great plugin, by the way, if you haven't used it. Uh, I'm just gonna use it for the sake of this demo. So I wanna do drums, right? We'll have it generate a, a drum kit. And then I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna do sequential output routing. What it's gonna do is it's gonna route each pad to sequential outputs. So every drum plugin does this. There's usually a button that says route to sequential outputs, or you might just have to do it manually. So this plugin Atlas goes out to kick because kick is number one. So as you can see right here, this goes right here. Now what we have to do is let's just hold shift and select the rest of these 15 tracks. So it's 16 outputs total. Press shift option command. And then where it says no input, let's go to plugin Atlas and then we'll click on channel two. So now it'll do two all the way to 16. So we have kick, which is one and then two through 16. So now Anytime you play any of these other pads, they're gonna be routed out directly to any of these channels. I have this labeled with the layout that I like, but you might need to customize this. You have 16 pads in this particular template, so it's really, really useful. Obviously, if you're doing you know, superior drummer or another type of drum plugin, you're definitely have to, gonna have to customize this a little bit differently, but I find this is a great way to start out, especially if you're doing like hip hop, pop, anything that uses like drum machine vibes. Keys is pretty much the same deal, although I left this kind of bare bones because typically VST synth plugins like Serum or Hive or whatever you're using are gonna have a ton of effects and stuff on there, so I don't really need too, too much on the bus. But like I showed you earlier, I have my side chain. Just so you can see, by the way, my kick is being sent out to a kick side chain. So the kick side chain is what's feeding all these other tracks right here. So as soon as the kick hits, if you turn this ratio up, it's gonna start side chain compressing to duck all your other instruments when the kick hits to create a little bit of space in your mix. You may or may not wanna do that, but I like just having all that routing set up in advance in case I do wanna do it. It's a really great effect that you can use. And then the same thing actually is going on with my snare. If for whatever reason you wanna duck some instruments with the snare hit, I have a snare side chain already set up in here. Last group that we have is for effects. I usually just use this to drag in like, you know, sweeps and impact noises and stuff like that. So there's just two audio tracks. And then, like I said earlier, everything gets bussed down to instrumental, acapella, and then these two go to the mix bus. And on my mix bus, I have this Avid stock impact SSL style compressor. You could use SSL plugins. You could put limiters, saturation, clippers on the mix. But uh, I just have this one thing doing a little bit of volume boost. Uh, just to kind of get things going here. So let's look at the mixer view now so you can just get a different perspective on this. So one thing that I wanted to point out immediately that's super critical for a template if you're recording a bunch of stuff is you wanna make sure that you keep your latency under control. So as you can see here, my delay is zero and I specifically picked plugins for my templates that uh, have the smallest amount of latency. Because if I'm recording, it's really frustrating to deal with latency. Singers don't like it, guitar players definitely don't like it. So you wanna be choosing plugins that are sonically where you want them, but also are efficient as far as latency is concerned, at least for this tracking and production phase. So that's kind of my philosophy on that. It really, really helps speed up sessions. We can monitor the latency compensation here in the bottom. I recommend always having this open. I'm always checking it in my sessions. Once you've created your template, if you weren't already aware, you can go right here to file and you can hit uh, save as template and you can create actually your own uh, folder category here, so that's really nice, and you can name it and save it. You wanna make sure that your template opens quickly in Pro Tools uh, because you don't wanna be waiting around when you're inspired, so don't bog it down with too many plugins or anything crazy. And then the last thing that I wanna actually show you is this export the bounce mix window. So the key command typically is command option B to open this up. So I just wanted to show you how nice this is. This is a really efficient way of bouncing down your stems, which I do pretty much every session because you always wanna have a backup of everything in case you need it in the future. So the way that I have this configured right now is it bounces out master, instrumental, acapella, guitar, bass, drums, keys, and effects. And that gives me 
pretty much everything. It, once you sort of figure out the exact configuration that you want, you just hold command and press any of these numbers to save it as a snapshot. It's really, really helpful to bounce stems for all your projects just in case to have as a backup, or if you're collaborating with other people, it's just great to have. And I'm very diligent about doing that and it's really paid off for me. So that's kind of what my bounce mix looks like with this specific template layout. Thanks so much for checking out my video. Let me know in the comments if this was helpful or not, and I'll catch you all in the next one. Later.